The new face of the MPD. Assistant to the Chief of Staff, unnecessary. Assistant to the General Counsel, unnecessary. And as of today, Internal Affairs and the Chief Financial Officer will report directly to the mayor. Face it, Jack. He's trying to defuse your power. By the time the mayor's done, I'm going to have six more of the stooges I'm going to have to work with. You want to play politics? That's the game. Jack, no, you can't smoke in here. What the hell has happened to this city? You can't smoke and drink at the same time? I mean, come on, Sherry, the whole world is turning into Disneyland. It's your fault. You cleaned up Dodge. You can't have it both ways. Well, I did it. Don't press you. <clears throat> okay. What is it? Sherry, you would make an absolutely phenomenal superintendent of detectives. <gasps> I knew it. I knew it. When I saw you, I said, Sherry, there was something lurking behind those sneaky blue eyes. You're a little scared, I understand. Uh, You're letting oh. the title intimidate you. Don't. I mean, it's not like that at all. You're going to be able to do what you want. You can set up your own decoy unit. Sherry, the most important part, you're going to be doing what you love and what you are really, really good at. I'm flattered, but I have a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lieutenant's adjutant. I can't even pronounce it. You're in a cubicle all day. I am You're not pushing in a pencils back and forth. You know, I do how do you not, not go crazy? <clears throat> I would have to leave New York. You can always come back. There's a plane leaving for Washington. On the hour. Every hour. The answer is no. Really? I think you want the job. The cheeks are blushing. That's sunburn. I went to Coney Island on Saturday. This is it. I gotta get back breaks over. Washington is the place for you, Sherry. Washington. Still dodge down there, sweetheart. 2031 respond. Possible jumper at Reed T over. 2031 responding. I'm on the scene. We have an unconscious person sent the board to my location. Copy that, 2031. The board is responding. Suicide. On the third floor. In that row? I wonder what came first. The girl or the panties. Chief Mannion. Joseph. I better go to New York. What did Sherry say? She laughed at me. Well, at least she didn't say no. Well, she did that, too. Chief, it's her. What do you got? Preliminary on the girl from the apartment. Parolee, Sheila Ruskin, 38. Released from Oldman six months ago. Did two of four for robbing a hardware store to feed a junk habit. Toxicology reports no drugs in her system. She apparently cleaned up in prison. Yeah, then she took a leap out of a third-story window. Maybe not. The coroner says she had a broken nose before she hit the pavement. You think somebody slugged her? She had a burn mark on her neck just below the hairline in the shape of a horseshoe. Who's the parole officer? Uh, uh, Grant Singer. We're on our way. Why didn't we think of that? Huh? I didn't think of it. Why didn't you say something? The page. What's up, player? Still getting them bad guys? Every chance we get. There's a waste of two perfectly good badges. Hi. Hey, Sam. What are you seeing those guys in? Virginia Beach. Nice. Where are you going? Terry, I hope. It's his uh, birthday next weekend. It's a surprise. Mm. Well, you think this is hard on me? It isn't. I, I am so over you. Uh-huh. Mm. 
I wonder why she didn't show up. I was gonna go looking for her. When was the last time you saw her? Um, um, Thursday, around noon. She got family? Brother in Oregon. Uh, they don't talk, though. Boyfriend? Yeah, one of my boys, Raynell Bird. They met right here, as a matter of fact. Isn't it a violation of parole? Yeah. Ex-cons ain't supposed to be hanging around ex-cons, but I can't be following them around 24-7. They wanted to get married. At least I talked them out of that. Where did we find Bird? He's washing dishes over at that Mexican restaurant on Lincoln, Hearts of Mexico. I wouldn't eat there, though. Thanks. You guys mind if I tag along? I got a little understanding with the owner. You gotta bend the rules sometimes to get these people hired. Come on. Some kind of way to get it done, baby. Be right here. get locked up, man. Why would we not do that? I'm a parolee. That's what cops do. You run me in here on some two-bit parole violation, then try to pin me for something else I didn't do. So why don't you give us a few details of what it is that you didn't do? <sighs> get off my back. We haven't even started, buddy. I know that face. It's not your damn business. Right now, Bird. Parolee, the boyfriend of the girl who flew out the window. Right. Bird. Really? Yeah, he's a sprinter. One in the sea. Uh -huh. 100, 400 meter relays, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw him at the Garden and the Melrose Games. This kid is fast, Joe. Yeah, he played a couple of quarters for the Redskin wide receiver. He had bad hands. Then he blew out his knee. He was all promise, Joe. Maybe you should tell us about Sheila Ruskin. What about Sheila? We're asking the questions. Wait, wait, where is she? Wait, is anything wrong with her? What, what am I right now? What, man, tell me what? You don't know. No, I don't know. Oh, you don't know. I said I don't know. Tell me what? Right now, she's dead. You hear that? You want to tell us about that? She's an idea, dude. Hey, 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 where is she? Come on, man, please. Get her. Come on, man. Please, let me see her. Give me your arm. All right, please. Settle down. Turn around. Take it easy. Ex-cons. Everybody's an actor. I don't know. We got any reason to hold him? Cut him loose and put somebody on him. Just a feeling. Terry? Hey, you ready? <laughs> One minute. Hey, Terry, do me a favor. On that bulletin board above Temple's desk, there's a yellow sticky. Can you give me the name of the store that's on it? Uh, see it? <laughs> no. Oh, it's right in front of you. What are you, blind? <laughs> that's why he's got the dog. <laughs> Pete and Eddie's hardware on Laverne. Thanks. I wasn't expecting children's handwriting. I have something for you. Oh, yeah? Happy birthday. Oh. Thanks. Open it.
Thanks. Is that a yes? Yeah, of course it is. You don't have to go, Terry. If you're not ready, just tell me. We've only known each other a couple of months. A weekend together is too much, you know, just... Lindsay, I love the car. Look, I I'd go anywhere with you. Anytime. Okay. Hey, Joe. Chief Mannion, go home. It'll all be here tomorrow. I can't get Raynell Bird off my mind, Joe. He sold two rocks of crack to an undercover cop, got five years in prison. He was 19 years of age. <sighs> Tell me that's not racial bias. He's out in parole. He's got a good job. He's getting his life back together. He gets pulled over for a DUI. Instead of a slap on the wrist, the parole board sends him back to prison. Somebody puts a, a joint in his cell. By the time he gets out, his wife has left him. She's taken the kids. He's got no job. The guy's made one mistake, and the rest of his life is ruined. Well, that's those short-sighted, get-tough policies of the 80s coming back to haunt us. I mean, they gutted all the reform programs. Now the prisons graduate a new permanent criminal underclass. Do you remember Reentry Sunday? Yeah, that's a program Ella tried to get off the ground. All right. Great idea. You had good grassroots, but uh, no funding. Yeah, I got the file. I reread it. You reintegrate them back into society, get them back with their families. I'll go on home, Joe. It'll all be here tomorrow. It'll all be here tomorrow. I'll take a couple of them. Yeah. Don't work too hard now. Make sure Jack sees this. I see it, Ella, and I'm on it. Hey. Don't assume this means anything. You got on a plane. Well, my mom always said if somebody gives you a ticket, use it. I love your mom. No, my mom never liked you. Anyway, ground rules. I only came here because I want to see if you're actually going to let me do this job. You know, kind of kick a few tires before I drive it off the lot. Take the Chevy around the block. Mm-hmm. Great. Tell you what. You're staying with me. Four seasons. Like I said, four seasons. And you're paying for it. Of course. Of course. May I see you out? Thank you. I have a cab out front. But you're also paying for it. Of course I am. Just remember, Jack, you asked for this. Mm -hmm. Do you believe this? I kind of like him this way. Morning. Did you sleep here? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you're going to walk the walk here. feeling you lost your mind no 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 i mean it's serious your gut reaction what are you feeling claustrophobic cold it's depressing every year 650,000 parolees are put back on the streets 67 percent of them commit crimes again jack right but it's the 33 percent that i'm interested in joe since when Locking people up is what made you famous. Yeah, but someday they got to get out, right? Okay, a crime is committed. Who do we go after? Rouse the parolees. But that's just playing the numbers, Jack. Look at the recidivism rate. But what if you were able to deinstitutionalize these people? You know, take the prison system out of them. I mean, it's a proven point. You find parolees jobs, they're not going to commit crimes. If we don't do that, they go back on the street. They either commit a crime or they become a victim. The system is screwed up. I gotta find a way to change it. I'll have somebody check on you. Hi. Jeez, sorry. 
I didn't mean to scare you. And you are? I need somebody to co-author some legislation with me. Now, you have a staff of lawyers on board, don't you? Yes, I do, but... Now, let me ask you a question, Mrs. Whittington. You plan to be in office for a long, 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 long time? Or are you just going to coast through your tenure? Or do you want to earn your money? Do you want to you make your mark? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Here, here, here. I'll just let me get that. Because when the voters go to the polling place and they poke that piece of chad right next to your name is what I'm about to tell you. I'm going to give you the opportunity of a lifetime to get on the ground floor of one of the hot button issues of our time. Prison reform. Yeah. Now, do you mind? I know it's not glamorous, but it is risky. And I can tell by the look in your eye. That look is why me? Well, because you're a freshman congresswoman from California, you have an MBA, you, uh, you're married, 35, you have a child, you have a minor in social services, and you're an environmentalist. It's a perfect picture. Plus, California has the highest rate of returning parolees in the shortest period of time. I'm a crime fighter. And that's what I do. If I could give parolees an incentive to keep from committing crimes, then part of my job is done. One question? Sure. Who are you? Jack Mannion, Chief of Police. Oh, yes. I remember that name in bold caps in my orientation package. Yeah, well, see, I'm liking you already. Now, now you go ahead. You eat. And, and let me tell you why prison reform affects the safety and security of every man, woman, and child in the United States. You're calling it Re-Entry Sunday. Yeah, uh, at least it's a step in the right direction. It gives them choice, and more importantly, it gives them hope. That's a great idea, Chief. I'll leave you to uh, finish up here. Uh, and uh, the dolly is yours. Let's get it back by five. <laughs> OK. Damn it! My, my, my. Is there trouble in paradise? I don't get it. What is it with you men not being able to open up? What are you afraid of? Men and women approach love differently. No, they've done studies in the womb. Male testosterone eats away at this fibrous bridge that connects the two halves of the brain. The female bridge is thicker, so you can use more of yours. So you can learn languages easier. You talk about your feelings and stuff. Brander, you're freaking me out. All right, you want my advice? No. You're right. I'm overthinking this. Hey, don't try to make him like you. His bridge, too small. <laughs> okay, you know, proof Jesus was Italian is he talked with his hands, drank wine at every meal, and <laughs> well, where are we going? A new restaurant. It's a surprise. Oh, man, I hate surprises. Come on, let's, let's just go to Manelli's. We always go there. Here, I have a map. Uh, Which way? Which way? Uh, right. Well, what's it called? La Casa Madre. It's on Elmont Street. Like, uh, you know what? I'm, you're probably better at maps than I am. Why don't you pull over? Let me drive. It's near Connecticut Avenue. Uh, well, right. Are you sure that's what it says? I, did I just say right? Okay. Take it easy. This can't be right. Well, it's your fault. You should have gotten directions. They're in your hand. Look, you should have let me drive, Nancy. Why don't you just let me drive the damn car? Oh, my God. What? You can't read. <laughs> I mean, that is ridiculous. It's these stupid directions. That's why we always go to the same restaurant. Hey, you're wrong. You have the menu. Stop memorized. it. You don't know what you're talking about. And the other day, in the bullpen. Nancy, you I just said you're me. wrong. And the card I gave you, you never read it because you don't know what you're you talking about. Terry, you're a cop. Terry. Terry. Sheila Ruskin's place was pretty unremarkable. One frame picture, a bunch of old letters. 
Somebody wiped it down for Prince, but we did get a hit on one. A, uh, Paul Otero, parolee. Both graduates of Aldrin Penitentiary. That's Paul with a hair up. Hand on the shoulder, friends. Hand on the hip, maybe sisters. But when you go for the reach around, I think you're going for something else. Lovers? You think Paula did it? Jealous rage. She found out about Ray now. Can we get to Paula? Say the word. She's got the same P.O. as Sheila. Singer? Mm -hmm. Coincidence? There is no coincidence in crime. These guys are stretched pretty thin. He shares half the six with some other guy. They got 75 clients. Bring Paula in. What are we going to do to get these people to talk? Hmm? We lie to them. We trick them. We make deals. What do we get out of it? Nothing. I mean, look at her. She ain't afraid of us. She knows I'm not going to go in there and go cowboy and slap her around. Maybe what she needs is like a little beat down. Save us a little time. She sure as hell ain't getting it at home. I don't know who the hell you are anymore, man. We're gonna keep that on the QT, right? I'm right there with you, man. We knocked a couple of heads today. Makes my ride home a little easier. Saw her that morning. Spent the day in bed. I left when she was asleep. I worked the night shift at the fisherman's wharf. How'd you know she was dead? I felt it. I was in love with her. Is he back there watching? Is who back there watching, Paula? Singer. Is he back there? No. Yeah, like I believe you. Joe, so, I need a new budget on re-entry Sunday. Who, who'd be good at that? Try Honey Bowl. He's no Ella, but he's good with numbers. Why would I do that? She's afraid of him. Get them to ask her more about Singer. Is that what you do? Yeah. She wants to talk about him. Huh. You want to do an uh, interrogation? Sure. Just let me in there. Well, then take the job. Jack, that is not no, fair. No, I just can't let anybody interrogate her. Oh, sure. well, you remember you. the last time you did one? That's not How good you were? The adrenaline pumping? Take it or leave it. How often do you have to see Singer? Once a week. But he uh, checks up on you another time, doesn't he? Look at work at the fish market. He makes uh, unannounced visits to your home. That must be a pain in the ass. You're sitting there after work trying to mind your own business and have a beer and he just blows in. It's like he owns you. Did he know about you and Sheila? I must have put a crimp in your sex life. He getting off on this? No. But you gotta give Singer some props, though. At least he was smart enough to get that you two were in love. And you were in love, weren't you? She was a beautiful girl. Look, um, I think I know where you're coming from. I suppose, you know, you're into women, and that's probably why you don't like him. I don't like him because he treats us like garbage. Who's us? Me, Sheila, and other girls I know. Well, Paula, I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, nobody likes their P.O. Yeah, nobody. These guys get stretched so thin, he's got a huge caseload. I'll get him to back off a little bit, okay? I'll talk to him. Don't. Why not? He... he... What, Paula? He forced us to have sex with him. And if we don't, he threatens to send us back. He's a sadistic son of a bitch. <laughs> if we did it wrong, then... He'd burn us with his lighter. I should have told right now. He'd have done a number on him. 
right now, didn't they? Not until this morning. He called me all weepy about Sheila dying, and I figured I'd let him in on some of the real pain. Pick Singer up. Are we protecting him, or is he a suspect? Both. You read the movies? That's right. Yo, did uh, Wahlberg get with that girl at the end, the girl with the uh, blonde hair, right? What's her name? I don't know. I, I fell asleep after the car chase. <laughs> you were alone? Yeah. Yeah, my social life sucks. Is that why you force your parolees to have sex with you? Hey, wait a minute. You guys are spinning your wheels. Paul Otero is a born liar. Hell, she did time for obstruction of justice. Pull a file on the Wythorn trial. She sat right up there and made things up. Why would I jeopardize my career for a little... ex-con? You're saying it didn't happen? On a stack of Bibles. You want my client list? Ask them. Yeah, but everybody lies when it's in their own best interest. From CEOs, presidents. My money's on Raynell. Uh, if I had to bet, I'd go with Paula. Why? Well, think about it. She finds out Sheila's sleeping with Raynell, gets into a jealous rage, they fight. Sheila goes out the window. She's flat. This is Paula's testimony from a trial last year. A PD I know pulled the transcript. She lied seven times during three hours in the chair. Listen to this. He took me into his room and sexed me. First, he held me by the hair and forced himself on me. Sound familiar? Yeah, but you know what? She's not lying. Jack, look at me. I know when I'm being lied to. She's not lying. What do we know about Singer? Squeaky clean career type. A degree in criminology from Georgetown. He sat the FBI exam and failed. Does he smoke? Uh, well, he had a nicotine patch on his arm. What are you thinking? Both the girls had burn marks. Paula is the type of girl to burn herself just to hang the guy. Yeah, and Singer's smart enough to have dumped the lighter by now. Just because he burned the girls doesn't make him the killer. We gotta find a way to put him at the crime scene. See, she's been all over the apartment. Busy day, they might have missed something. They're not infallible. Why don't you get over there, see what you can find? Joe, let's put a bolo out on Rain Albert. Let's get him off the street before he does something stupid. What's the charge? Parole violation. Okay. learned no, I didn't and after that they don't teach reading anymore but the older I got the better I got at cheating uh, look I was good at math and sports and, I, mean, I, 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 think, I think that's what saved me you know you hit a 90 mile and I'm a fastball all is forgiven so uh, how'd you ever get into the MPD a girlfriend helped me fill out the forms and then I, you know, it was a lateral transfer from Atlanta. So. But the test? The day of the test, I faked the broken wrist. So put on a cast. And, you know, I asked if I could take it orally. And they let you do it. After I got posted, I, you know, I just memorized all the street signs in my PSA so I knew where I was going. And... <laughs> Will you say something, Nancy? I can't help thinking that if I hadn't figured it out, you never would have told me. I'm a decorated cop. I'm good at my job. I don't know what I do. Give me your foot. 
Somebody moved that chair. Mm -hmm. Toward you. Uh-huh. Looks like blood. Maybe you should call Butterfield. Da 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 da. Ah, Perfecto Mundo. Yeah, I've been staring at this thing since I found it at the scene. This is a Merc. It's the T89 Slam series. It's a good shoe. A lot of, uh, a lot of cushion there. It was the best they ever made, as a matter of fact. They've never been able to duplicate it. Anyway, it's Sheila's blood, and the lift has to be his. Or Paula's. And Sheila didn't wear basketball shoes. We checked her closet. All right. So all we got to do now is find the sneaker that matches that print. Go. Theos right now. It's right now. Look, man, give me a piece. What's it say? Help. A man has a gun to my mother's head. A terrified eight-year-old boy handed that to a cop he passed on the street. That cop didn't know how to read either. Both the boy and his mother were murdered. Terry, I want you to know, I'll keep your secret. I'm not going to turn you in. Nancy, I'm going to get help. I want to learn to read. What about you and me? I'm on duty. Chief Manier. Hey, Joe. Jack, I have the overnight reports. Everything all right? Uh, yeah, Davis called in sick. That's about it. I'm, uh, I'm sorry that thing with Sherry didn't work out. What are you talking about? She went back to New York. She say anything to you? Said for you to give her a call, you were busy. We had a deal. You better check on your deal. Temple Page. Wanna get in on a little something tonight? I'm there. Abandoned warehouse. Lincoln and Summers. You know, I think there's nothing in this station. What are you doing? What are you doing? Jesus. Jesus. He and a friend knocked over a chicken joint last night. What? Killed the owner. His ex-girlfriend worked there. She fingered him. Oh, he knows who pulled the trigger. I need to talk. You're first up. What? Stay away from the face. It's the last chance, man. It's the last chance. Do this. Take your hands, kick him. Scumbag rat. Get out! Palms up, palms up. You know the routine. Cuff him. You never were much of a cop. Feeling close to the god now, Paige? Yep. I get there, you feel a lot closer. Reno. Thanks. Chief, we got movement on Raynell. It's 
scout car spotted him three blocks away. He's asking for you. Front door's open. That sounds like an invitation. I'm going in, Joe. Just keep your phone open. That'll make me feel better. Right now! Right now! Right now! Chief Mannion! Chief Mannion, I'm coming in! Right now? No, 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 no. no. Put the gun down. No. Put it down. Put the gun down. Do something! No, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> Sheila told me how you show up at her place. Three, four o'clock in the morning. Wake her up, make her piss in the cup, and watch. But she left out what happened next. Tell him! What do you want me to say? No. It, it was an accident. We had, we had a fight, and I, I pushed her. She tripped. She fell. All right, you satisfied right now? Look at me. Sir? I saw you run. Yeah. If Hamilton had made a good pass to Peters that day, you would have won three gold. You were there. I never saw anything like it. Look at me. You were the fastest thing I ever saw. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't nobody touch me that day, huh? <laughs> Felt that way again. Yeah, it's once in a lifetime. Not many people get that chance. <sighs> no, sir. Well, then don't make it worse. <laughs> Give me the gun. Come on. How's it feel? No, 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 no. How's it feel? Right now. I ain't gonna kill you, singer. No. I'm gonna let you check out how it feels on the inside. All right, give me the gun. Come on, right now. to Barbara Boxer's people, and they're very interested. If we can get her involved, it would go a long way toward getting the funding. Are you okay? Uh, yeah. Uh, Frohly, I was working with Rain Alberta, who died this morning. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, all the more reason to press ahead, isn't it? Exactly. Mrs. Whitman, I saw you on the floor today. Very impressive presentation. Are you looking for co-sponsors to that legislation? Yes, of course. Uh, Congressman Jesse Jackson, this is Jack Mannion. Chief of Police, you have quite a reputation. You also. We both know how to ruffle some feathers in this town, don't we? Love to ruffle. Is it possible that I could invite you to lunch and we can talk about this? I'd love to. Well, you two go ahead. I have some things I have to do. Good to see you, Chief. Good to meet you. Thank you.
Okay. What happened in there? I told you. He was bad-mouthing you. Oh, sure. I mean, come on. You don't need to be so protective. There's a lot of people who don't like me. He called you a headline-grabbing, shoot-from-the-hip, cowboy, loudmouth ego on a stick. You call me a loudmouth? Yeah. So you told him you were taking the job, right? Okay, now listen, this is not going to be easy. When we were married, it was, you know, kind of like a little fantasy. We hardly ever even saw each other. Cold reality is we don't always get along, and I am not going to agree with you just to agree with you, and sometimes I'm not going to agree with you at all. Yeah, well... I can agree uh, with all that. And no paperwork. That is a deal breaker. Uh, we're going to get you an assistant. Welcome to the MPD. Thank you. How are you doing there? That's all right. Can I take a look? It's fine. Uh, come on. Oh, just Kiss it and make it better. No, no, no. Yeah. No, don't. Don't be sweet, Jack. Don't. I used to kiss all your hurts. Don't be sweet. You know you can't keep it up. You know what, Here. mister? You were very close to getting a bucket of ice in your lap. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see how I am with my left? <laughs>